Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to my apartment. Uh, we're here filming a little behind the scenes for Beam. What's Say up? Say what's up to Chris. This is my videographer, Ryan. I don't know about you, but I've spent hours of my life watching dance videos like this. Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang. To the joke, don't collect that dope. You better have a lot because the beat's so cold. Hottest in the streets, know you probably heard. There are millions of people all around the world who watch videos like this on a daily basis. But one dancer in particular has dominated the space more than anybody else. His name is Matt Stefanino. <laughs> Is it true that you're the most followed dancer on YouTube? <laughs> uh, yeah, it is true. Congratulations for one million subscribers. This is the first one I ever got. And then this is the second one I ever got. Rewinding further, 100,000 subscribers. Wow, this is probably like eight or nine years ago. I was born in DC when I was about 12 years old. My parents moved us out to the middle of Virginia. Like we had horses, we couldn't see any neighbors cause we were in the woods. There was a snowboard mountain, like a resort nearby. So I really took, took up to snowboard. When I would train in the summers, like on the trampolines at the gymnastics places, learning new flips, there would always be like break dancers and other types of athletes around it. They were like, bro, you already know how to flip. Like you could definitely learn how to break dance. I was like, all right, cool. Yeah, teach me some stuff. When you watch some of those videos back from those early days, what goes through your mind? Bro, it's extremely embarrassing. Uh, I don't show them very often, but yeah, it's, it's a cool reminder of where I came from. It didn't make any sense. Start dancing at 18, move to LA a few years later and become like a professional dancer. Like that doesn't seem like it should work out, but I felt like if I didn't try it, I would regret it. So I packed up my car, a little two door Honda Civic. I drove it 40 hours across the country. I got out here. I didn't know anybody. I didn't have a place to live. It was a really tough start, but the whole time I just kind of felt like I'm finally doing something for me that I wanted to just like try. Like what's the worst that could happen? Sleep in my car for a few weeks, eh, I'll survive. I got really lucky with a job almost instantly. I booked a job dancing on The Tonight Show, being Jay Leno's body double. It was crazy. It was like, a, I couldn't believe it was happening. And then for the next eight months, I, I literally booked nothing. I definitely remember like sitting in my car, talking to you know a friend and being like, I think I might move back home. I don't think it's working. Like I'm really trying, but it's, it's just too difficult. Like I'm, I'm not making enough money. I can't pay my bills. Everybody's so good here. I started making YouTube videos in 2007 and I continued that into my life in LA, not really realizing that, hey, someday YouTube is gonna be this massive thing. I was just kind of like, oh, this is a good way to like promote my choreography and maybe get a couple extra teaching gigs here and there. Yeah, there was a really big tipping point for me. And that was the summer of 2015. I don't know what was in the water that summer, but I posted, I think it was five videos in a row, just like normal, one every couple weeks. It was just like, boom, 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 boom. So my channel literally tripled in like that summer. And uh, that was when I realized like, okay, uh, maybe YouTube is like a really, a, a really big opportunity for me because after the summer of 2015, I would literally open up my email and on any given day, it was like, hey, we want you to fly to this country and choreograph for our artist. Or, hey, we want you to come teach at our intensive out here, we'll fly you out. All those things that I had gone through, it was like they led me to, to this moment. Now main channel is up to seven and a half million. Second channel, two and a half-ish. Third channel, two. It's crazy. So what are you about to do now? I know you're getting ready for class, right? 
Yeah, so I actually have a class in a few hours and uh, I started the choreography, but it's not quite finished, so I need to rehearse real quick. All right. We film in here, look, this is the dance studio right here. Boom, so you got the mirrors, the lights. One of the things about when I'm choreographing is uh, I make a lot of weird noises. Like for instance, this sounds like a zoom ha to me. And then this is like a zoom ga, cause it hits down, that's like a ga. So does this language kind of help you actually remember the steps and know what the sequence is? Every noise either correlates to a beat or the way that the artist is saying the lyric. So if I say, zoom, zoom, ga, ga, ti, ti, ba, then either their lyrics are going, you and a girl and a zoom and a hey, like it's either their flow or it's the beat. So when I say, ooh, boom, boom, there's a sound in the music that goes, boom, boom, boom. That's all stuff that you can play with. <sighs> Breaths, sounds, dee, dee, dee. Like anything that you do, if it matches to a sound, it, it brings the song to life, you know? Ready and a lefty and a zoom and a hot and quick part, deep, deep, boom, boom, ha, ha, uh, pose, 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 dip, chachi. Well, let's head to the studio, what y'all think? Welcome to Millennium Dance Complex. I just walked in. Look who I saw on the wall right there. Bam. There you are. Yes, it's kind of crazy. I remember just looking at the wall, all the celebrities, all the teachers, the people that had passed through here. One of the things we talk about is like, one day my picture is going to be up on that wall. Like, I'm going to teach here. I'm going to have done a music video and rehearse here, you know? And so it's, it's a huge honor to be right next to uh, the main studio when you walk in. This is a pro level class, but yet you have adults and you have 12 year olds dancing at the same level. Let's bring it, let's bring it up here. Uh. What are your favorite dance moves? Uh, do you want me to show you? Yeah. Hey, hey, big up my jeweler, big up my four five, big up my ruga. Hey, big up the baby, because they treat me like King of the Munda. I saw his YouTube videos and I started coming. I have three kids and my last pregnancy, we had just moved back to LA to dance. I danced all the way up until three days before I gave birth. Quick side note, one of Matt's biggest goals in life had nothing to do with dance. It had to do with him appearing on The Amazing Race. I tried out about five seasons, I think it was. I really wanted to be on this show, but it's not happening. So I kind of let that dream go. What happens when you take the world's biggest social influencers offline? This is how I hitchhike. Turns out they were doing a YouTube social media all-star season of The Amazing Race and had seen my videos on YouTube and wanted to bring me on to the show. I replay it in my mind all the time, honestly. Like if I'm having a bad day, like things will pop in my head and sometimes it's hearing Phil as the host of the show and he says, you have won The Amazing Race and one million dollars. And they play the song on like violins and shit. It was really dramatic. I almost cried, but I held it together. Hey guys, what's going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can choreograph a routine in probably 20 or 30 minutes. It's almost like seeing into like the matrix a little bit. I don't know how they can remember all of these moves. A lot of times people will be like, why do you stay after and take so many pictures? And why do you respond to people so often? You spend so much time like, you know, and it, it's because I remember the first class that I went to and I remember looking up at a teacher that I had, you know, watched on YouTube. And, and if I'd have gone up and be like, hey bro, can I get a picture? And he was like, nah, I'm, I'm busy. It would have really changed you know, my, my life as a dancer. Like, I think it's important that everybody, no matter what level of success you get to, remembers what it's like to not have that so that you stay humble and you stay human. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Skirt. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> Boom.